All right, guys. Um, I believe this this video I'm gonna talk about mainly um tattoo machines, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about rotary versus coil. Um, I know a lot of new artists out there, um, especially um, like starting off, um, especially since rotary is getting really, really big nowadays. <clears throat> um, everybody's wanting to start off like beginning tattooing with, with rotaries and there's a lot of controversy in the tattoo industry about um, earning your dues and all this horse shit. And um, there's a lot of people um, with, if I, I don't know if you've heard the, you probably have, the saying loyal to the coil and all this stuff. Um, my opinion, this is my opinion, I'll give you my opinion. My opinion is to, if you're beginning, I think, like, like me and many, many of my colleagues, um, we've all started out with, with, uh, coil machines. Um, they're, you know, they're obviously heavier than rotary, uh, most, most of them, um, louder, um, but you can do a lot more with a coil machine, uh, tuning and adjusting wise than you can do with a rotary. I mean, a rotary is just a, a motor um, that's, you, you change the speed by the voltage. Um, and it's, that's not the case with coils. With coils, voltage just, if you go up or down, it just changes the power of, of the coil machine. It changes the, the hit, how hard it hits and how soft it hits. Um, the speed actually comes from the contact screw and the uh, front spring um, that adjusts the or adjusts the speed of the machine. Um, so my setup, like what I use most of the time, but not always. I usually use my my Bronc rotary. I use it all the time. I love rotaries. They're lighter. They fit my hand perfect. Um, I also use my Big Wasp um, uh, rotary machine with Swiss motor. I use this. Um, it's a little bit heavier, but I'm used to coil machines, and that lines like a fucking sorry. That lines like a champ. Um, but if if I get a client that has a little bit tougher skin or a little bit stretchier skin or whatnot, you know, a little bit harder to get into I will go to my coil machine and I will stretch that skin out and I will fucking pack lines like like nobody's business um, when it comes to lining in my opinion coil machines can't be topped like they just they can't there's no, there no rotary out there that in my opinion can top a coil liner like there's there's none um, but my style like my style, I do whatever I need to do, uh, whatever I'm asked of, um, I do. Uh, but my style is black and gray, so I don't really need to pack lines um, unless I'm doing a specific, like neo traditional or traditional um, type of piece. I'll use my rotaries 90% of the time, 85 to 90% of the time. So, but I'm I'm trailing with what I do. But I, what I think in my opinion, that uh, new tattooers should do is is start off with coil machine. Get used to that. Get get used to your machine. I, I, I think a tattoo artist should be able to adjust his machine and if, if he has a pile of parts like coils, springs, armature bar, screws, contact point, like if he has that, washers, he should be able to put in, in a frame obviously. He should be able to put all that together and make his machine. Um, he shouldn't just be like, hey, I bought a machine, I want it tuned specifically, and I don't know how to do a fucking thing with it except for tattoo. I don't think that that's right. I mean, any craftsman should know their tool. They should be able to use it at, at every point. If it faults, they should be able to 
make it better. I mean, unless, you know, like the coils fucking end up shitting out or something like that. And even that, I don't wrap coils, but I can do everything else. I solder my um, capacitors on and I do all that shit. And that's only because I want to know more about my machines. I've even tore down a rotary and, and made my own uh, direct drive rotary out of just bullshit just to be more aware of what the hell's going on in my machine, like how it works. That's just me though, I mean, I, but I do believe you should be able to uh, adjust your machine and you should know your machines. Um, and like I said, that's just my opinion, but as, as, as I trail off, um, I do think that rotaries um, are great for, um, some are really good for color packing, like just hitting that color in there and getting it in smooth and with no trauma. And then some, uh, quite a bit, are really, really good at black and gray, just smooth blends, and it's just, and that's what I use it for. Um, and there are some, I mean, don't, the rotaries line, they can line, you know, but there's nothing beats a coil liner, like nothing. I'm sorry, it won't. And I, like I said, use rotaries more than coil. So, and that's my opinion. But if you ask anybody, any real tattoo artists out there who've used both and who've lined with both, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. You can't beat a coil machine. And if... They may say, well, I use a liner to, or I use a rotary to line and I really like it. But if you ask them what is better, they will tell you a coil machine lines better, but I prefer this or whatever. <sighs> you know, whatever. But, um, I digress. Uh, so I'm all over the place and I apologize. And if you're still with me, thank you. Um, but, um, there's the there's no better or worse machine like when it comes to overall you know what I mean like overall because obviously uh, you could line with a shader and all this stuff but it's not practical I mean that's why they have different types of machines coil wise um, either a great liner cutback liner um, you know a soft shader a color packer like they got so many different machines out there for different things that a rotor machine, the right one, could do all. So that's, I think, why everybody's going to rotaries nowadays, because you can do so many things with it. And not only that, going from needles to cartridges, there's a big debate there with, uh, you know, um, contamination or, you know, like cross-contamination and everything, like, I don't know, and some of these high class, if you look at Johnny Galt, he, he just uh, made a video not too long ago about uh, Cheyenne's cartridges and how they have wiggle room and they should not. I love cartridges because you can just pop it out, pop something else in and get at it, but when it comes to, like I said, lining, um, I'm straight needle, man, like, just get in, you know, messing around. You know it's going to be straight. If your hand's straight, it's going to be straight. A lot of these cartridges are not perfected yet. So there's, you know, contamination issues. I mean, I know they're working on it and everything. But, and even so, they still give. Like, when it comes to the actual plunger or needle bar going to the, uh, to the uh, cartridge plunger. Like, it's, there's two different, like, there's, friction here and up here so but with this with a needle it's one bar and it's just bam just getting it in so I don't know man um, these are all my opinions but um, hopefully um, you guys take heed of you know things that you hear and the right things you hear and you hopefully you guys learn well and if you have any questions man I'm I'm happy to help with what I can. I know I trailed on and went all over the place with this, but hopefully you got what I was trying to say um, with with this message and everything. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment or whatever. But until then, um, I guess we'll just see you later. Maybe.